Now, notice uh, a few changes that have occurred here. Uh, some of these phrases, through my being with you again, was have been moved, have been relocated completely from the end to the beginning. Uh, we've changed from rejoicing to just joy. And uh, notice how we're introducing this idea of overflow. Uh, so um, where this is a bound, now we're using a, a term that's more common in English. So the NIV is softening it up quite a bit. But still, uh, I mean, we could probably get a pretty good sense of this, but I don't, I don't think it's quite as clear as maybe a more functional translation like the NLT. Now the NLT is an, a functional translation. The NIV is kind of in the middle between formal and functional, but the NLT really is a functional translation. And notice how much easier it is to understand. It reads, and when I come to you again, you will have even more reason to take pride in Jesus Christ because of what he is doing through me. Now you're really getting a sense of what Paul is trying to communicate. He's saying God has been doing things through Paul, and so when he gets there, and he tells them about it presumably, they will have more pride in Jesus Christ. Now notice, in order to make this much sense, uh, they had to add some extra words here, like what he is doing through me. That's not in the original Greek. They had to supply those words so that you would understand. Now, a Greek reader probably would have known what Paul was talking about in their own language because they're so familiar with it. Unfortunately, in English, that's lost in translation, so it has to be recovered, and that's what the NLT is doing. They're more concerned with you understanding the meaning than they are with preserving the, the original words. So uh, you can really see that now. I've got one last translation. It's the New Century Version where they read, uh, You'll be very happy in Christ Jesus when I am with you again. And uh, that's pretty simple. Now, I get students always laugh when they see the NCV. It almost feels like it would go too far. But if you think about it, it actually isn't too it isn't too distant from what the original wording is. That your boasting may abound, you will be very happy. We already noted that boasting probably has it what it actually means in this sentence, probably more of joy. Uh, and so the English equivalent here is happy. Uh, notice how they even kept the phrase at the beginning. Uh, not even, um, you know, the NIV did that. And so the structure, the sentence structure is, you know, pretty close to the original Greek. And, uh, you know, they took through my presence again to you. Uh, they kept that last. And, you know, good, solid translation is when I'm with you again. So even though the NCV seems oversimplified, and it is, it's really easy to grasp. They haven't added too many extra words like the NLT does. Uh, so actually, I think this is this is actually a pretty solid translation, even though it sounds oversimplified. Anyway, I want to show you the difference here, the spectrum. I'm not trying to prefer one translation over the other or one philosophy or other. What I want to do is show you the strengths and weaknesses of each one. Now, let's say, for example, that you want to do a word study or you're doing some kind of grammatical study through a, through a letter you wouldn't want to do a word or grammatical study with an NLT or an NCV or maybe even the NIV because the structure changes. But you could go with something with the Young's Literal, NASB, or the King James because they're a lot more formal. But let's say you're trying to crush through an entire gospel so you can get the meaning of the entire gospel. Well, you're going to get, if you try and go formal, you're going to get bogged down with really strange uh, wording like the uh, YLT or the NASB or the King James. But if you go with something like the NLT or the NCV and possibly the NIV, you could read large chunks of scripture in plain uh, common English so you can understand it. Um, anyway, so I think that kind of gives you an idea of the strengths and weakness of formal and functional. Now one thing I do want to really encourage you is not to use words like a watered down or or literal versus not literal, those aren't very accurate terms. Form versus function is an accurate way of describing the translation philosophy. So I'm going to recommend that's that's the way you um, commun that's the way you describe them. Now here's a translation spectrum. Basically, what I tried doing is taking some of the more popular translations and put them on this chart so you could see where they kind of line up with each other. Um, 
you've got formal equivalents all the way over here these are the ones that really try and stick word for word uh, even if it doesn't make a ton of sense uh, so these are going to be harder to read but great for word studies and grammatical analysis um, and then you've got your your more paraphrastic uh, or functional equivalents like your living bible the message good news translation the ANCV and the NLT now I should tell you a couple things the living bible was a the precursor to the NLT uh, both uh, the message and the living bible are are English I don't even know if you want to call them translations but they're English Bibles where one person uh, basically paraphrased the Bible uh, the, and so it's n maybe not even a real translation but just a paraphrase that's made really easy to understand now the Living Bible became so popular a few years ago that um, a scholarship a, a, commun a community of scholars decided to revisit the Living Bible and just they created this huge or this large panel of scholars that would carefully go through the Living Bible and come up with something that was as easy to read but was accountable to uh, to a lot of very careful scrutiny and so um, scholars came out with the NLT I, I personally prefer it uh, out of most of these but anyway here's the functional side here's the NA your, your formal side and then you've got these translations in the middle like the NEV the NIV probably the most popular um, by far the most popular out of these so anyway uh, what I recommend is when you translate I'm sorry when you interpret is that you pick at least two translations one from the formal equivalent side and one from the functional side and that you use them both at the same time that you kind of as you're reading you compare the two translations uh, compare your understanding of the text and uh, and kind of use them to kind of keep each other accountable now I would love it if if you use three translations but that's me that's uh, a little too hopeful on my end but at least definitely two and if you if you're really uh, gonna go all out I'd say maybe pick up the the NIV or uh, the net Bible or the TNIV to use in conjunction with those anyway so I hope next time uh, next time you study I'm, what I'm recommending is that you use multiple translations and that you understand the strengths and weaknesses of each one and use those to your advantage